2024 officially completes my 20th year as a full-time entrepreneur. 2004 was the first year that I secured our first high paying client for our digital marketing agency in London. So much has happened since then. I've traveled the world, worked and spoken in over 15 different countries, won almost 20 awards and honors, published more than four best-selling books, launched many successful companies, projects and initiatives, secured multi six-figure contracts from government and am the entrepreneur in residence to some of the UK's top educational institutions. But back in 2001, I was struggling with depression and almost lost my home. Tried business after business with no success. I learned one huge lesson. So if you're interested in the 20 year journey of some random entrepreneur on the internet, then you've stumbled across the right video. But let's start by winding the clock all the way back to 2001 when I first started my business. It was extremely difficult securing finance. I mean, forget about the banks, investors were turning their backs on me and I really struggled because I was doing most of this on my own. But our first customer sale back in 2004 made me realize that if I could just put into words the value that I could offer this client, this customer, that I could win them over. And then I started to understand how the agency model worked by leveraging high skilled freelancers from other places in the world, then being the front end London based office where we could sell to big city clients and really mastering that storytelling enabled us to successfully raise money. And what was pivotal to all of this back in 2010 was meeting my first mentor and building that relationship and really getting insights from somebody who just simply had more experience than me. I was smart, I thought I could work it all out, but what I didn't know was what I didn't know. And that's the stuff that my mentor knew. Fast forward, I was able to build on all of these experiences and mistakes and start to get recognized for the work that we did. And we started to win award after award after award. And then I started to realize the value of hiring real experts. So as an entrepreneur, I am generally good at everything, but I realized that you've got to hire people who are better than you at that particular thing. So whether it was fundraising, whether it was accounting, whether it was marketing, whether it was delivery, I had to find people who were better than me at doing that. Otherwise, I'm there telling you something and I don't actually know whether or not it's going to be good for the next stage of the business. I used to approach business purely on the basis of just generating revenue, which is why I ended up in investment banking as a career. But whoever's been in investment banking, for me anyway, it was completely soul destroying. So my journey was to find something that I was passionate about, but also really good at and good enough to be able to create a sustainable income for me and my family. Now, because my work was aligned with my life purpose, which was helping entrepreneurs, I realized that actually, if I could have had help when I was a young entrepreneur, how amazing would that have been? But because there was no blueprint for this new idea that I had, I kept failing and failing and failing. But because this idea was aligned with my purpose, I just got tired. I never wanted to quit. And what I've learned to do is if I'm pivoting or finding a new way to crack this problem, then I'll give it a probationary period. I'll say, all right, we're going to try this new product. It could be a book. It could be a mentoring program. It could be an online resource, but we're going to try it for three months and see if it actually works. I'm not going to have any emotional attachment to it. I'm going to treasure the outcome. So therefore I'm going to measure the output. And after around three months, you'll have enough data to figure out whether or not this was a good strategy or not. Top business lessons I've learned. Now, as I mentioned earlier on in this video, there was one huge lesson that I learned back in 2011. And that is success is boring. Yes, I know it's not what you're trying to hear. You wanna hear about all of the highs, the lows, the private jets. You wanna hear about all the investors and the breakout campaigns. But actually, in reality, if you have a formula that works, that you are going to rinse and repeat, then you are going to have a business which is repetitive in nature, which is operational. And if you think about something which operates like a clock, which we all rely on, it does the same thing over and over again, but it produces something really valuable in this instance, time. But just like a clock has so many moving parts, it has to be carefully placed together and each part has got to work in accordance with another part. And that can take some time. So just think about whatever it is you're doing a little bit like that. You've got to bring lots of different people and ideas together and you've got to get them working like clock. It's a little bit like if you wanna get big biceps. Now, anyone who's into gym work will know that you've only gotta do three things in the gym to get jacked. You've gotta train really hard, you've got to rest and recover, and you've gotta eat. You've gotta do three things really well. You've gotta have a product that people really want. You've got to market and sell that product, and then you've got to deliver it. And then you simply repeat that process. 
Well, I'm proud to say that we have the largest community of young entrepreneurs in the world. And over the next few years, we plan to aggressively expand across the UK and globally. I know I've said it before, but I'm gonna say it again. You've got to be extremely good at the thing you do, otherwise people will not part with their hard earned cash for it. But also because failure is inevitable, you do have to be passionate about it in conjunction with being really good at it because the passion is going to make you keep going when things get really tough. Changes in the business landscape over the last 20 years. Well, if I'm honest, being black in business has changed over the last 20 years. The needle is slowly moving in the right direction, but if I'm honest, it'll probably take another 100 years for it to be where it needs to be. But barriers to entering a new market have almost collapsed. With the advent of technology and now with AI speeding things up and automating them, 20 years ago, if somebody said, I'm gonna set up a bank, which is going to challenge all of the high street banks, you would call them crazy. But now there is an explosion of neo banks across the world because technology has made that possible. Now, if I could start all over again, there are two things that I would do very differently. First, I would build a team as early as I could. And with or without that team, I would raise as much money as I could for my venture. I would not bootstrap it because I believe that ventures require fast growth. Second, I wish I knew about these eight business ideas earlier that have helped students, friends, and associates of mine make anything between 3,000 and 50,000 pounds a month. And if you've enjoyed hearing about my 20 year journey as an entrepreneur, then please hit the like and subscribe button and I'll catch you on the next video. Ultra and out.